I'm Rodolfo Torres, and I serve as UCR Vice Chancellor for Research and Economic Development. Today, I'd like to discuss the importance of principal investigators creating safe working environment in their laboratories. A few years ago, the National Academy of Science created a committee focusing on promoting a culture of safety in academic chemical research. The committee, comprised of physical life scientists and behavioral scientists, held public hearing, heard testimony from academy and industry safety experts, and toured laboratories in top research institutions across the country. During this process, it became apparently that faculty, staff, and students often do not appreciate the hazard they are facing. On multiple occasions, researchers were found wearing short and sandals with no lab coats or safety glasses while working with high voltage equipment, acrylamide gel, solvents, and corrosive. When asked about potential hazards, they explained that they were not working with anything dangerous. This is in stark contrast to what you will commonly find in corporate research settings for agricultural, biomedical, electronic, material, or pharmaceutical research. In exploring cultural reasons for difference in safety attitude, the committee determined that academic researchers have much to learn from corporate industry, especially in regards to the role of the principal investigator. Many of you as PIs may have had expectations and experiences similar to mine as we were building our academic careers. First, attend graduate school. Then, take a position as a postdoctoral researcher, secure a tenure track appointment, perform research, publish, and work towards tenure. During that time, you were probably never told explicitly that you were also becoming a small business owner with responsibilities for hiring and managing people, overseeing budgets, ordering supplies and equipment, designing research space, and all of this on top of your academic responsibilities of teaching, directing research, securing grants, and publishing results. However, of all your responsibilities, perhaps the most important is setting the tone for safety. It is imperative that as a PI, you lead by example and hold everyone accountable for safety, including yourself, your graduate students, postdoctoral fellows, staff, and even visiting colleagues. In particular, take these simple steps and make sure that everyone does a proper hazard analysis before beginning work, that safety equipment like fume hoods and biosafety cabinets operate properly, that personal protective equipment such as lab coats, goggles, and gloves are available and used when needed, and that everyone is encouraged to report near misses in order to prevent more serious future incidents. Setting the right tone with respect to safety starts with you as PI. In the end, these simple first steps could help save someone's life. The urgency to improve safety in academic research laboratories has been demonstrated by several high profile injuries and fatalities, including the 1997 death of Professor Karen Wetterhahn at Dartmouth University due to accidental exposure of two drops of dimethylmercury absorbed through her latex gloves. The 2008 accident that led to the death of 23-year-old UCLA researcher Sherry Sengji, who suffered severe burns and later died from a splash of pyrophoric reagent tert-butyl lithium on her clothes. And the 2016 incident in which postdoctoral researcher Thea Eakins Coward at the University of Hawaii lost her arm and sustained other injuries in a laboratory hydrogen gas explosion. Our top research academies and organizations have all publicly proclaimed that research safety must be a priority. Some of these organizations include the National Research Council, Association of Public and Land Grant Universities, U.S. Chemical Safety Board, and the American Chemical Society. Something that caught many faculty members' attention was the 2008 UCLA lab fatality case. For the first time, a professor was indicted on criminal felony charges for the death of a researcher in his laboratory. The case was eventually settled, but it had reverberations beyond the incident. Since the 2008 UCLA lab fatality, criminal felony charges were filed in 2015 by the EPA against the University of Missouri staff member for disposing of sulfuric acid down storm drain. In December of 2015, the Departments of Labor and Justice signed a memorandum of understanding 
stating that they will criminally prosecute managers and supervisors for worker safety law violations that involves chemicals, environmental damage, severe injuries, or death. What this means is that regulatory agencies and organizations beyond UC Riverside are now holding all of us accountable for safety in our laboratories. For these reasons, and more importantly, because I know we all want to do the right thing, please actively participate in our research safety program. Appoint someone to serve as your lab safety contact and refer them to the EHS Research Safety website, where they can learn how to engage your team in creating a culture of safety. You will find that leading with safety creates a more productive work environment and brings about better research outcomes. Thank you for doing your part to make UCR safe for the entire campus community. You are the engine of innovation for our future. We wish you much success and a safe journey. Thank you. Thank you. Be safe.